Hello family, how are y'all doing? Dr. Lentiso here. Today I'm going to talk about GMOs, genetically modified organisms. This is a controversial topic in our world, but most specifically in Ethiopia right now. I'll explain. But first, I'd like you to hit the subscribe button down below and click on the bell to be notified when I upload amazing videos like this. Let's get started. Recently, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced that it is pleased with Ethiopia for accepting GMO seeds. The only GMO accepted in Ethiopia right now are BT cottons. BT cotton, in simple terms, is a cotton that has a self-defense mechanism against pests and insects that are known to attack cotton balls in particular. What are genetically modified organisms? These are organisms whose genes have been artificially altered in order to modify and change the characteristics of the organisms in one way or another. Humans have been attempting to do this for many years, thousands and thousands of years, by selective breeding. Selective breeding is a term that we use when people choose parents with uh, specific characteristics and then they breed these parents together in order to have an offspring with a desired characteristics. One example of selecting breeding is corn. Corn, also known as maize, began as a wild grass called teosinite that had tiny ears with very few kernels. Over the hundred of years, Teosinite was selectively bred to have large and larger ears with more and more kernels, resulting in what we now know as corn. What makes selective breeding different than genetic modification is that now scientists are directly targeting the genes instead of breeding to parents and creating an offspring with a desired trait like they used to. Let me start from the basics. The smallest structural and functional unit of an organism is a cell. The human body has 30 to 40 trillion cells. Within a cell, we have a structure called DNA that carries the genetic information in our body's cells. And a gene is a distinct portion of our cell's DNA. Genes are coded instructions for making everything our body needs. In genetic modification, we target these genes using a method that is not found in nature. An example of genetic modification is the medicinal product insulin, which we use for diabetes. In this case, we use recombinant DNA technology where we take the insulin coding gene from the humans, pancreatic beta cells, and then use E. coli bacteria as a host to produce more insulin hormones. The most common benefits of genetic modifications are higher yield of crops and resistance to pests. So this can result in foods that are resistant to disease and drought and also they will be in a higher quantity so it will increase the supply and reduce the demand for foods. This is especially important in countries that are dealing with hunger as it will resolve the issue of lack of food in these countries. In addition, for farmers that are struggling financially, this can be beneficial as they will have a higher yield and hence a higher profit. The main concern about GMOs is that there aren't any studies that show the long-term health effects of GMOs. Are there any direct toxicities? that are going to happen to the human body because of the cons consumption of GMO foods. Can GMO foods provoke allergic reactions? Is there a possibility of the genes turning into a carcinogen and leading to cancer? Or is there a possibility of gene transfer in which if the food that we consume has resistance to antibiotic, would humans that consume GMO foods be resistant to antibiotics? These are a few of the many questions that people are raising regarding GMOs. According to a study, it has been shown that so far there aren't any allergic effects that have been recorded from the GMO foods that are available on the market right now. Pertaining gene transfer from a GM food to a cell of a body, there is low probability of transfer. 
Regardless, the scientific community is encouraged to use a gene transfer technology that does not involve antibiotic resistant genes. Another major concern of GMOs is outcrossing. That is the mixing of crops from conventional seeds with GM crops. This may have an indirect effect on food safety and food security. There have been cases where there were mixings and GM foods that were intended for industry use or for animals were found at low levels in products that were intended for human consumption. In order to eradicate this problem, there needs to be a clear distinction on the fields that are used to raise GM crops from the fields that are used to raise conventional crops. Another concern about GMOs is that it may cause loss of genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is when an organism has different genetic characteristics and this will help organisms adapt to changing environments. In 1800, there was a potato famine in Ireland where an entire population of potato was destroyed because all the potatoes had identical genes. If those potatoes had variation in their genes, there might have been one population that would have survived the infestation of a pathogen. So that is why genetic diversity is essential. GMO is not only a scientific but also a political and economical issue. Pertaining politics, lawmakers have to decide whether GM foods should be labeled so that consumers can choose which one they prefer. In the US, the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Standard Law was passed on 2019 which indicated that foods that have more than 5% bioengineered material should be labeled as bioengineered. Pertaining economics, there have been questions about whether the farmers will have full ownership of the crops or whether the technological or scientific experts will have part ownership. In addition, there have been a growing concern about the heavy involvement of chemical industries on agriculture. Is that a good thing or not? I would like you to leave a comment and share your opinion. And now let's talk about Ethiopia. Ethiopia, which happens to be my beautiful homeland, has been growing healthy, nutritious, organic foods for many years. The introduction of GM foods might change that. Unfortunately, there was an article published by World Vision on 2017 that stated that nearly 9 million people in Ethiopia are in need of food assistance. And 461 districts in Ethiopia have been labeled as hotspots that are in need of critical assistance. Millions of farmers in Ethiopia are going hungry. And there are many reasons that cause that. One of the reasons is the lack of rainfall. The lack of rainfall leads to low harvest. And low harvest for farmers that are in Ethiopia means there's not going to be any food on the table for their family. Would the introduction of GM foods and the yield of the higher yield of crops that might result from GM foods be beneficial for these farmers that are going hungry in Ethiopia. Another concern in Ethiopia is the invasion of worms, locusts, and other pests that are destroying the crops. Would the introduction of GM foods that are resistant to pests be beneficial in Ethiopia? What do you think? I would like to know your opinion about this. My opinion is that there needs to be more study done on GM food products. However, I believe that it is okay to introduce GM products that are not for human consumption. For example, BT cottons are used for the production of cloth. I believe this is okay as long as there is no mixing of genes from these crops with other conventional crops. Please leave a comment down below telling me what you think about the approval of GM products in Ethiopia. What do you think? Should we allow just things that are not consumed by humans? Or should we allow GM, genetically modified products at all? I would like to know all of that. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. Have a good one. Bye-bye.